Hello everybody and welcome to a really late night reading of Shadows of New York from Vampire the Masquerade. We did Coteries of New York previously. This one is more of a one character affair. That being said, there's multiple endings, I believe two. Depending on the choices that you're gonna make for the first playthrough, I'm just gonna go with whatever choices I think are fitting. I gotta say that the main menu music is taking me to a lot better places than Curry's of New York main menu music did. I, I am really enjoying this track. It is quite... quite the track. The main antagonist, I mean the main protagonist, seems to be a Lasombra, and if I remember correctly, this game starts from... Yeah, I know, right? I don't blame you, that... That track rocks, man! Um, yeah, if I remember correctly, it starts from... To test before your embrace, and apparently you can fail it. Also, moving backgrounds. Holy shit, that's an improvement. Welcome to my castle. Don't expect everyday logic to work here. It went out the window sometime after midnight. Maybe earlier? My kingdom is not of this world, you see. It lies far outside of concrete, tangible reality. I tried to identify the way people reach it, and I'm convinced it has something to do with the moon. Some say that Moon's aura can turn them insane. You heard the phrases, Moonstruck and Lunatic. The way I see it, Moonlight gives them some subliminal permission to reveal their true selves. And so, whenever they let the Silver Radiance guide them to the gates of this place, they feel different. Once they pass the doorstep, they are ready, they are ready to act out. I wonder what that says about me, considering that the most influence the moon has around me is the fact that it can make me pass out. <laughs> ah, it reveals your true self, the sleepy one. <laughs> ah, that one, that's my favorite Marta. A dance of horrors and marbles begins. It's 3.31 a.m. Welcome to Be Big Beat Burger. 24-hour burger joint with what seems to be no staff but two people you eating that's interesting if you're here at this hour you're not exactly readying up to be a productive member of society come tomorrow morning more likely you're praying that the sunrise never comes or you have extreme bouts of insomnia and you're like fuck my life I need to get up at 6 a.m. and I'm sitting in a burger joint at 3 a.m. right now Yeah, Boris. <laughs> Fairy burger. <laughs> the seductiveness of torpor. That is the real you. <laughs> the sleepy one. <sighs> if you're high enough generation, you can control your minions without actually waking up, so you're gonna be fine there. Insatiable children of the night gather around, hoping to bask in the afterglow of tonight's victories and wind after a frustrating series of failures or simply fight to keep themselves together. <sighs> That's a very poetic way of describing people with insomnia game. I'm children of the night, eh? Meanwhile, I'm just sitting here greedily, greedily reveling in every interaction they have. They have no idea. They are only here for my amusement. To them, I'm just a random girl sitting in the corner. Well, you view yourself quite highly, Missy. But this is my domain. I've been coming here almost every night for years. I know where to sit, where to look, and where to eavesdrop for maximum amusement. Sitting in a restaurant does not restaurant your domain make. I can I can go and sit in McDonald's every single night. That does not play, let me claim McDonald's. Um that's not that's not how property works. 
I'm basically a voyeur and unashamed to admit it. It gave me insight about the human condition I've never otherwise have gathered and more importantly a necessary skill set to make ends meet as a journalist. So instead of like um taking the book route and studying in a university or changing up your places and sitting in parks and you just you decided to study human behavior in a burger joint for the for the past two years night time. Demence. <laughs> ah yes, the Mackie D. <laughs> Uh, let me just climb the Mackey D's. That's my domain. As I write on my crappy old laptop, patiently waiting for the legion of negative voices in my head to get too tired and offer useless, to offer useless feedback, I keep my senses peeled to pick up stories around me. Does she just have a blog that's titled Late Night Burger Joint? Hello, Jade! It's Shadows of New York. I really liked the entry music. I am- I'm gonna be having fun with it. Um... Currently, we're introduced to our protagonist, which has laid claim to the domain of a burger joint as a mortal, where she sits... and writes blog posts, apparently. Of course, a lot of regular events, such as food fights, are nothing to write home about. I'm sorry, lady. Um, regular food fights? Regular food fight. I, I have never witnessed a food fight in my life. You're sitting at a burger joint at 3 a.m. and people are actively throwing burgers at each other. Your reality sounds rad. Aside from my unfortunate tendency to become collateral damage in someone else's battles, her reality sounds rad! Up to this day, I've had to wash my clothes because of Coke, Diet Coke, hot coffee, apple pie, and some sort of uh, improvised honey mustard bomb. Every stain tells a different story. Where is she? Where does she li Why does this happen on the regular to her? I mean, she's not... Yeah, I know! You can afford- They can afford to waste food! <laughs> they can afford a honey mustard bomb! They're throwing drinks at each other! And apple pies! What? And she's like, it's nothing to write home about! This is like the regular everyday occurrence in Midnight People. Sometimes this hobby is exhausting. Sometimes it's disturbing. <laughs> oh my... <laughs> okay, um, what... Does the Mafia frequent your burger joint? Disturbing? Her hobby is writing about a burger joint and it already sounds like the most awesome burger joint that I've ever heard. It has regular... Food fights, and apparently disturbing shit happens. Disturbing shit in a burger joint. Sometimes it's dangerous. Dangerous shit in a burger joint. Although not as risky as back when I wasn't carrying pepper spray. Pepper spray in a burger joint. What burger joint is this? Still, the sights I've taken in over the years here have made it absolutely worth it. I've got so many stories, I don't know where to begin. <laughs> I hope so! Otherwise, okay, I'm, I'm sorry about what I said at the start. You can have as a... You can have staring at people in a burger joint as a hobby if your burger joint is this metal. I've never had such a metal burger joint. Theatrical breakups, impromptu morning parties. I'm sorry? Um... The breakups? <laughs> yeah, break 
campsite believe impromptu morning parties? <laughs> Unexpected friendships forged in the fires of senseless battle. Where the senseless battle started by impromptu morning parties. A lady in a gorgeous Givichai dress, ordering a box of takeout chicken nuggets, paying in cash with her hands completely covered in blood. She was asked if she wants a napkin, she said no. Okay, um... World of Darkness shit? But if anyone walked into my, any of the restaurants around me, with their hands covered in blood, they would probably be detained until the ambulance or police would get there. One or the other, everybody would be concerned. Very concerned. Two thirsty macho dudes shamelessly going for it in the corner. <laughs> Sorry, what? Shamelessly going at it in the corner? What? Hushed moaning filling the lobby while everyone around violently fights to act as usual and maintain an illusion of normalcy. Your burger joints come from with free gay porn, I see. <laughs> a straight up kung fu fight between a diminutive cashier and some drunk bodybuilder going through a psychotic episode trying to break all the windows. <laughs> um, this- this line just reminds me of a writer prompt. Um, Reddit had a writer prompt posted where, um, you're an IKEA worker, but every time when people mispronounce, um, the names of the furniture, they literally summon in demons from the other reality, and you have to, like, grab a sword and go and fight them. That's- that's the level of shit! Here! Kung Fu? I mean, drunk bodybuilder? Uh, br trying to break windows? Fine. You call the police. Kung, Kung Fu? Your diminutive cashier practiced Kung Fu inside the burger joint. It literally feels like some sort of secret mafia burger joint where everybody's like super military trained. Just to be able to serve people on minimum wage. Oh, that that being said, I've heard a story. Um, sometimes people are a bit weird. Because one person said that they came into their workplace of 200 people recently. And it smelled of burning sage. And I was like, do you have a witch working there? Because sage is actually how you cleanse the place. And they're like, yeah, our cook is a witch. And she does this twice yearly. And literally everybody reacted not with annoyance of, oh, it's so annoying to smell um, burning sage, but with, holy shit, that's interesting. Why don't you befriend them? We would all be all over that cook going, what do you practice? What do you wear? Cleansing. You get away with cleansing a workplace of 200 people with sage? The big guy left the joint fully covered, convinced he KO'd himself while the service worker was just standing next to him. Seemed proud of his victory too. What? Okay, so the big guy thought that he knocked himself out? While the service worker was proud that he won against the drug- Okay, somebody, when they were writing this intro, they got, like, really high and wrote, like, the most fantastical burger joint ever. But I would also be sitting and staring at it. <laughs> I 
yes. Night shifts in Sainsbury's. Those get brutal, man. A middle-aged tag getting a heart attack after screaming her lungs out not to let Muslims near her food just because she saw a white girl wearing a hairnet behind the counter. Okay, that's closer to reality. <laughs> I asked the Alas Nekbar. A masked couple robbing the restaurant of 30 hamburgers Forcing the employees to cook at gunpoint. Police later said those were art students reenacting some hipster book they read. I have to Google this. Um, I, 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 man steals burgers. Burger King thieves dubbed Robin Hoods after stealing food for the homeless. Or Texas man steals Burger King meal from ex-girlfriend after learning new suitor bought it for her. So I was not imagining um, stealing from burger joints is an actual thing that sometimes happens, maybe. This is life- no, this is metal burger place. This is humanity at its worst and best. No, it's the most fantastical burger place in the whole friggin' world. This is not normal, honey. You know my level of engagement with other people when I'm outside, even late in the night? The most interesting thing that you're gonna get run into is a person that goes to a park to run around in a circle Getting a near heart attack from you just being there, asking What are you doing there? Because you really startled him by existing. That is like the top interaction <laughs> She's sitting in a burger joint that has kung fu happening This is the noise that serves as the foundation for my creativity. This is the soma that keeps me going. This is sigh What's what's your um day job, honey? Because that's you're wearing like really professional clothes. As pathetic as it may sound, these days this is the only place where I feel alive. I'm sorry, there's like so much life happening in your burger joint that I ain't even surprised. Nothing can top that place. Nothing ever could. Sometimes I think of myself as a leech feeding on these people's stories, emotions, and personalities just because I'm not satisfied with mine. That is still like the most surreal burger joint I've ever heard about, so I... How can I blame you? I would be there all the time too if that was the case. At times I think of my psyche as some sort of shitty post-mortem construct that is fundamentally incapable of honesty, but only earns for something felt and truthful. Have you tried music? Does this even make any sense? I look at the screen of my laptop. 3.47 a.m. Yeah, you might want to go to bed. At this point, I'm almost... somehow bullock, but nothing interesting has happened yet. Feels like all the customers are watching each other tonight, hoping for the others to provide a fun diversion. Go home! This is my turf, you parasitic douchebags. Next time, go find your own. Um, I, I reiterate that this is not how ownership works, like, if you just sit in a place for like two years, you can't claim to own that place? Because otherwise we would all claim a Mackie D's for ourselves, um, or a hospital, or a park. I think it's time to call it a night, I agree. The coffee I always order so that they don't kick me out is undrinkable. Ugh. Oh, I, 
I reread the rough draft I've been working on for the last six hours. God damn, this is pure trash. Hold the backstage button till the Google Documents page is nothing but a calm white slate and let out a sound of deep relief. There's no pleasure more intoxicating for a frustrated writer than a raging on someone even worse than them, and what target is easier than the dumb bitch you used to be ten minutes ago? I checked the time again. I need to go. I have an important meeting tomorrow at 10 a.m. and I have a hunch it's not gonna end well. I have a hunch, honey, that you're gonna be very tired tomorrow and so am I, so that's fine. And it's not because I'm a responsible dumbass who's going to need a few cups of coffee to simply function on a basic level despite like four hours of sleep. I'm feeling called out here. It's because I always have a hunch things are not gonna... Not going the way they're supposed to. Called intuition, we all have them. You, you can... Yep, that's very human thing. <laughs> hey, I resemble that remark too. Click clack, click click clack. The loud clatter of keyboards assaults me from all sides, makes the splitting headache unbearable. First of all, that's kind of a nice office, but secondly, I'm pretty sure that I've heard this ambience somewhere before. Wait. Could it be the Bloodlines Hospital? It's at the very least very similar. Used to be I dreamed of nothing else but being a part of the New York Lodestar editorial team. It was the first magazine I started reading regularly. The first magazine I ever bought for myself. Now simply hearing the word lo word Lodestar is enough to ruin my mood. Never mind seeing all the old farts phoning in more reactionary opinion columns and Wikipedia level analyses of the current events. Click clack, click click clack. They used to destroy and rebuild my entire worldview every month. They shaped my thinking about politics, art, and journalism. They even pointed me toward my favorite cigarette brand, for God's sake. Sounds like somebody has been an impressionable youth that never learned how to think for themselves. Then some talented people started leaving for greener pastures. Some got too wrapped up in their own neuroses. Some became complacent. All of them committed the sin of allowing themselves to grow older. Ah yes! Time! That evil deed! They all should have offed themselves at the age of 21, I forgot! Fresh blood was deemed unnecessary even though young freelancers kept being bled dry. These days, whenever someone from outside Lodestar talks about Lodestar, it's because of a few idealistic contributors willing to accept meager pay while putting in serious work. Dumbasses! Yeah, like you. Other than that, the magazine specializes in publishing pale echoes of provocative ideas I heard somewhere else a few years prior wrapped in an aesthetic that hasn't been cutting edge for a decade. I'm actually... Um... Specializes in publishing pale echoes of provocative ideas I heard someone somewhere else a few years prior... You want people to invent a new line of politics? Um, I... Forrest, I thought that it was, um... <laughs> I, I thought that it was, um... Thingy. How is it? 27. No wonder the readership is in freefall. But even though the ship is sinking, the old guard won't let it go down without a fight. As in anyone from outside attempts to board the vessel in hopes of fixing it, its course or its holes, they will be swiftly taken care of, I should know. Been there, done that. Wait, were you swiftly taken care of?
As it stands, the only full-time staff member who doesn't make me regularly attempt to cringe my face off with this writing is apparently Brian that coughs. As Lodestar Editor-in-Chief Brian and Jay, the man sitting in front of me right now, of course he only had time for editorials these days, drop in the sea of needs. Managerial duties have hit him hard. It's the second time he lets out a theatrical cough like this. He said his piece, now it's up for me to react. But I'm coming up blank. Did he say cough cough? Was that his piece? Was cough cough a piece? Cough cough couldn't be a piece. But what do you want me to say, Brian? I'm pissed off. I can tell you already made up your mind, but you still want to go through the motions. Just to make me feel listened to. Whatever, let's do this. Um, forest... Um... Forest fairy bugger, I... I... She works in a politics magazine? And, um... Yeah, she works in a politics magazine. And she sits and writes interesting stories about people in the most metal burger joint I've ever heard about. So her thing is writing. Um. The man is a sexual harasser, Brian. I feel stupid that I even have to say this out loud, but you're essentially covering up for a sexual harasser, Brian. No, I'm not. No, just face it. Let's say that Harvey Weinstein's story appeared on her desk instead of reaching the New York Times. Oh, okay. Um. Yeah, well, at, at the very least, she does have writing. Um, she has a day job, and she sp spends far too much time in the burger joint writing on her own blog. I just don't know what the blog is. Don't you compare me to the Times. You know that's a low blow. You're asking for it, and you're not exactly in a position to talk about low blows here. You know that's not the core of the issue. Well, she's on the- she's like on the main page for the game, like... Um, that being said, I'm in Lore by Night Discord. And one person knows the person who was the, um, model for Kadir. So it seems that a lot of these, like, portraits will be drawn from, like, real people, but, like, they're a bit nobodies, so... Um... She probably exists as a person. You're avoiding the core of the issue. No, I believe I pinpointed it in a precise way. If I were up to me, I would greenlight the article here and now, and we wouldn't be having this conversation. This is such ominous music for, um... Publishing debate. Can I get... Can I get ominous music for publishing debate, please? But you're killing the article just because some rich shithead told you he doesn't like it. Get real, this is not about some millionaire jerk calling me to make me an offer I can't refuse. What is this about then? Because it looks awfully like... It's about my bosses telling me this outlet can't afford the legal action we have already been threatened with. So, millionaire interference. Oh, for crying out loud, Julia, don't make me treat you like a child. You know how this works. I publish a story, it's Steele versus Gawker all over again. A lawsuit here, a lawsuit there, until we bleed dry. I have a mortgage, I have three mouths waiting to be fed at home. I have an amazing team that doesn't deserve to be torn apart over some... Don't you think I'm telling you mentioned your mortgage first? Don't you think it's telling you mor mentioned your mortgage first? Silence. Just asking questions. 
I know better than to get into these empty semantic arguments with you, Miss Sovinsky. You're good at them. The problem is, you're still not good enough. Meaning? You're too in love with weaving a good story and establishing a seductive narrative to let facts get in the way. You got enough boring suits with no principles on the board these days. They always give you facts because that's all they can do. I'm using facts as a way to approach some kind of truth. Um, that actually sounds like she's, um... What is that thing called? When, um... You accuse somebody of something in press? Libel? Libel? It's kinda, it kinda sounds like she would be committing that. It now kinda sounds like why people normally hashtag don't buy the scum. Um, when talking about newspaper called the sum, it the sun, because they take something and then they, tw it sounds like she twisted and accused somebody. Instead of accusing it in the court, she accused them in the magazine. Yeah, um, it sounds like her boss is, um, very sensible here, because that's just not what you can do in journalism. That's at the very least not what you should be able to do in journalism without getting sued. Except facts can blindside you, and Double Spyro has enough facts to water down your story to the point where it makes no sense to publish it. Their HR and PR are working overtime to deliver a convincing counter-narrative, and they're doing a great job. Won't mitigate the damage completely, but we'll put every little thing in question. Jesse Montgomery is a racist, a fraud, a sexual predator, and a downright satanic fuckhead. Um... Take offense at the satanic foothead, but fuckhead bit. But I'm, I'm kind of. Yeah, <laughs> Julia does sound like Twitter. I'm surprised that she didn't say fascist, because that seems to be like number one word of 2020 and 2021. The oh, a turf. Turf's another good one. Turf comes up a lot. Like, I... I do not doubt that the person that she's trying to accuse in a newspaper probably has done something bad. But, um... W when you open with big words, like sexual predator and racist, surprised that she's not, like, sexist, then, um, you do end up sounding like Twitter, <laughs> Julia. Let me say it again. Jess Montgomery is a racist, a fraud, a sexual predator, and downright static fuckhead. Do you personally believe it or not? This is not... You listened to the tapes, you read the transcripts, you seen the documents, you got the files. I'm asking for your personal opinion. Do you believe it or not? Um, Ju Julia? Control your hormones. You're getting really worked up about this. Um, and secondly... Um, secondly, for some reason I had Ripley's Believe It or Not flash through my brain, mainly because of the sentence, do you believe it or not, does not get used all that often. Click, clack, click, clack, click. Of course I do, but that's beside the point. It's not. Look, how about I just say it out loud and save us both some time. We're not having this conversation because there's an actual conversation to be had, you set up this meeting knowing very damn well there's only one way it's going to end. You got a mortgage and three mouths to feed. You prioritize the well-being of your direct surroundings over some nebulous concept of greater good. I get it, I really do. Yet for some reason it seems like you're only prolonging this conversation and rationalizing your decisions so that I forgive you, officially exonerate you? Ah yes! I, I like the um, cause and effect and not the X, Y, Z. I'm not the bad guy here, Julia. I just want to take Brian's side. Where's the option of Julia, you're a shithead? I wouldn't say you are. But it seems to me you won't be content with me saying just that. 
To me, it looks like you were having this talk because you're hoping that by the end I'll somehow see things your way and call you a good man. The way that I see this conversation is your boss approached you and said we can't publish this because we're just gonna be in a never-ending court case and your response was Fuck you! <laughs> he mutters something under his breath ending with a self-pitying chuckle. If only, I might be protecting my ego here somewhat, that much is true, but I'm not deluded. I know you're going to call me a scumbag by the time this conversation is over. Oh come on, don't turn this into a pity party. No, I'm absolutely a scumbag. And why is that? Because I'm firing you. My thoughts are scrambled. That sounds completely 100% accurate than how workplaces go. That sounds perfectly reasonable. I would fire an employee like that too. For a brief moment, the state of my bank account displays before my eyes with startling clarity. A howling void opens in my chest and starts traveling towards my stomach. No, don't panic yet, you idiot. Get more information now. There must be a catch. There's so many eggs in my basket. Let me get this straight. Ever since we met, I've been working on stories and pieces no one else in your office would touch with a 10-foot pole. Constantly interviewing total nobodies, always busy, traveling to the middle of nowhere, regretting my last trip, repeatedly ordered to clean up somebody else's mess. Julia. Oh, your long-winded spiels about how the disposable work is the most important work are suddenly only remember the disposable part. My feelings about the quality of your work remained the same as ever. It was vital. It kept the magazine going. I will always appreciate it. And why would you threaten to fire- she, He's not threatening, he is firing you. And probably because of the last conversation that you had for the past unclear amount of time. Because you, instead of going, this is my job, you were like, nah, -uh, things will go my way. I would never threaten you. It's a done deal. They made their decision perfectly clear. They? What they? Who is they? He glances left and right and then points upward for a short moment. When he speaks up again, it's a hushed voice. You know, the big kahunas. Can't really question them and they wanted your head on silver plate. He's not looking at me in the eye. You're not joking. I would never joke about stuff like this. It's real. Fucking hell, it's real. Damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it, damn it all to hell. All these years, all this grind, all my plans, and for what fucking asshole, you know I deserve better, and I always deserve better, and it always ends with me going down the drain back to the sewers, fuck. Um. Julia, where did you... Where did you expect to end with this? You were hired at, like, bottom tier position, right? What? What did you expect? Did you expect that just like with the burger joint you will be able to claim ownership to the company at some point? Because do you know what you do when you're hired at the bottom tier position? You save. You save money. The thing that you were getting paid for your article- you don't live wage to wage. You're a journalist, you're not a french fry server. Well now you can be a french fry server actually, but... Have you looked at how much Polygon pays their employees, for example? It's between fifty and $75,000 a year. Ooh! Thank you for subscribing, Forest Terry Burger. <laughs> um... But, but yeah, apparently... Apparently, she thought that if she just sat there for long enough, she would own the place, but... 50 to 75 grand a year, I never seen that kind of money. Journalists aren't low-paid jobs. Even ones that just regurgitate, apparently they're pretty well paid. 
um, freelance people are not paid. People by the gig are not paid, but apparently she was actually hired. Yeah. I make, um... Oof. Less than 10,000 pounds a year. If I round. Around there. Um, less. So... I don't even pass the tax barrier. I've been- I've been just living off that. So, um... What was she doing with her cash? It can't be all the coffees. No. Take a few deep breaths. Don't lose the plot now. Keep yourself together, you idiot. The moment you show weakness, they go for your throat. Get back in control. You can't do this. Oh yes, the very controlling. You can't. You just can't. I wish I didn't have to, but it's a lost cause. No, I mean it's impossible. Julia. You can't fire someone who's never been fired in the fr who's never been hired in the first place. Ah, it is. Are you a freelancer? It takes him a few seconds to put on this. Oh, I get it. Face let out a troubled grasp and start massaging his temples. Lodestar has been my biggest source of income for the past few years. That much is true, but technically nobody has ever hired me here. It was all freelance. Yep, that's a freelance job. Um. Freelance jobs are the worst because, um, with newspapers you submit the article and if they refuse it, you don't get paid for it. Um, a full-time position only served as a kind of dangling carrot. Promise of a decent pay grade, career perspective, maybe even some side of insurance to save my failing health. Oh Jesus Christ, I'm so sorry, honey. And the recognition I would get for being a part of the Lodestar team, a position that everybody around me seems to respect aside from me. Then why did I want it so much? There will be time to mourn what could have been, for now I should act like I don't care. You know what I mean, if I let you work even under a fake name, it would be a guillotine for me. This is ridiculous, you know I'm going to start shopping the story around the second I leave the room, don't you? Of course I know, I told them. Any response? Let us worry about that. Well, that doesn't sound ominous at all. I do wonder if I could get accustomed to one of these loud mechanical keyboards some people here love to use. Whenever I did my own work here in here, I was still expected to bring my own crappy laptop and sit closer to the lobby. Always on the outside, no matter how hard I try to break in. Vibration in my back pocket. Feels like a bad omen. I decided to ignore it for now. I've been working on this fucking story for, I don't know, 16 months? On and off? Jesus. Um, what did you expect to get for it? I hope that, I mean, you did say on and off, so I, I hope that wasn't your primary focus, because, um, oof, I know, you kept cheering me on, I know, we have even agreed on the pay I would receive, I know, I'm two months behind on my rent, no wait, two and a half. by any chance or a good friend have you considered taking part-time work somewhere like the burger joint like most journalists do I catch him off guard he's momentarily taken aback and then gives me an empathetic stare don't you look at me this way don't have the right I didn't know well now you do Look, if there's anything I can do to help... Yeah, money! Ask him for money! <laughs> ah yes, the Kung Fu burger joint, I forgot. You can't tell your big kahunas to fuck off, I don't think there's a single... MONEY! Julia! MONEY! <laughs> Learn to ask for it! You worked on a story for 16 months. Ask for some sort of comp compensation. Julia. I pull out a smoke and light it up. Gotta get back in control. Please don't do that. There's a smoke detector here. No worries. Nick turned it off a few weeks ago. Probably the most creative thing he'd done in the past five years. Good old Nick. The perfect 21st century cinema reviewer. Never has an original thought of his own. Just relies on his purely algorithmic taste to stay likable. And the best thing is... 
It works. Yeah, that's how internet works, honey. Um. Oh, yeah. That's how in. Yep. Yeah. Um. Okay. Drama videos. Um. In December, my YouTube had uh, 70 subscribers up. About there. Um, because mostly what I was doing was covering gaming news. In January, I decided that I finally have fed up with trying to cover fake drama because it's just... It, it was stressing me for a while. It was. It was stressing me for... I'm at minus nine subscribers now for this month. So, um, yeah. Um, that's why people feed the machine. Because it does work. Feeding the machine works, Julia. That's how, that's how people make a living. Funny, I used to dream about this job. It was Brian who killed this dream, making me realize Nick won't be unseated anytime soon and offered to teach me the ways of an investigative journalist instead. Wasn't the career I ever wanted to pursue, but to my dismay, I turned out to be surprisingly good at it, until this Montgomery thing happened. Serves me right, lesson learned, I should have pursued my dreams instead. Well, um, now with the current pandemic, you could be, I don't know, taking pictures of the streets because you can't meet and investigate anyone, just to say. Stop it. Nicholas is a good friend. A respected critic. A member of my team. And put out that smoke. People tell me I let you step all over me. Why do I even let you act this way? Good question, Brian! Because you once told me honesty is most important in a mentor-student relationship, and that it works both ways, and because I thought we were friends. He hired you. Shouldn't be friendship there. Um, you don't become friends with your boss. Um, it's not like, how dare you, bossy -o? I thought we were friends friends that's that's an are you taking lessons from the ventru that slept with hr because i feel like you're taking lessons from the ventru that slept with hr he bites his lip and stares sideways to avoid my eyes at the end of the day bosses aren't friends there you go must have been a terrible mentor if i didn't ever teach you that I'm just answering with dot 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 because you're still responsible for me, what? Best I can do for now is just stay silent. I don't feel too stable right now like I could explode any second. Julia, might have failed as a guide, but I will do what I cannot to leave you stranded, okay? There are options. None of them are remedy for all your troubles, but wait a second. Another vibration in my pocket, another foreboding feeling. This time I reluctantly take the smartphone out of my pocket. If it has to rain, why not let it pour? New email, it's a lengthy one. The sender, speak of the devil. No, 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 this can't be Christ. Just got an email from Mila Lopez. She claims she's just been laid off from Double Spiral. Same as Mike Antonoff and Jared Rivera. What? It... What happened? I'll spare you all her insults, okay? The key thing is, it seems their HR knows all the confidential information about my journalistic investigation and use it to shut everybody's mouth. Hell, apparently Montgomery walked up to Lopez as she was emptying her desk and told her to thank me for being, quote, dumb and careless cunt. Brian goes pale. I think he has a very good reason to. You fucking scumbag, you outed my sources? What? Of course not! What are you even saying? Oh. Don't you dare play coy. Must have been either you or me, no one else. You know the way I work. My investigation was basically untraceable, both on and offline. Carefully picked meeting spots, encryption upon encryption, every direct quote rewritten five times just in case. All sorts of red herrings scattered around. I know my shit, you know I do. She encrypted multiple things just for a journalistic thing? Hmm. Well, that's... In comparison, UK's government's um, security files seem to be held with a paperclip? 
We recently misplaced 150,000 police reports. Previously deleted 16,000 of um, people's medical information lines. Because they were storing it on an Excel spreadsheet. This girl does encryption. UK government stores things on an Excel spreadsheet. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? And this timing, did you just pass a flash drive to your beloved big kahunas during a meeting as a sign of goodwill? Look, I get you're upset, but why don't we just talk this through calmly? Okay. Um. She has a temper. She has a temper because none of these answers are correct. He's two and a half months late on rent. She could do with the money. He was apparently quite nice to her. You're right, we should now nah, fuck off. He does seem sorry, yeah. In a deranged way, realizing you're just a passenger in your own body feels liberating. Let's just see it all unfold. Calmly fuck you, Brian. Julia. I've been paranoid for months and months and acting like everybody I didn't know was an assassin or a corporate spy. I know I haven't messed up. Not in a way that would implicate all of them. You got that- you thought you could get away with this? Haven't done anything improper. Don't push the blame on me. So, what? You're claiming it's my fault, because you're never the guilty one. It's always the bosses, the economy, the obligations you have, and now me? You're being silly. Quit with this martyr bullshit. Calm down, or I'll have to- You moral shithead! You motherfuck- Calm down, for God's sake. And so it goes. I yell out a lot of words I wanted to say for a long time, but held back. I fling a lot of insults I've been wo workshopping for years, hoping I'll never use them. I break a few things. You break a few things! I'm surprised he didn't call the police on you. At times for a split second I see pity in somebody's eyes. It's gonna haunt me for a long time, but in the heat of the moment I don't care. These people know this company has nothing left to offer me, so at least let me take this catharsis. In the end the security guard has to escort me out of the building. Yep, that seems- yep, that- and that's the end of my journalistic career. That seems about right, yep. I broke my boss's belongings! There goes my career! Yep, that sounds- yep, that's correct. I just feel like my world has crumbled into nothing. You could have just been like, not done that, and asked him for money. And you would have paid your rent, and you could have searched for a new job. Doesn't that sound a lot better? I mean, you have every right to, like, Jesus, if I were you, I would have already broken down into sobbing mess. I would love to, but I'm on a subway, far too proud to cry in public, even now, and... And? It's stupid, but I feel like someone out there keeps destroying everything a whole dear just to see my reaction, like it was a prank show and somebody was waiting to record me crying. So out of sheer spite, I'm doing my best not to cry. Fuck you, whoever and wherever you are. That's the most Julia Sovinsky thing I've heard. Spite is the greatest motivator, huh? At least couch hop. You need to get out of debt, girl. That's like the primary thing to take care of first. Not feeling particularly motivated to do anything right now, to be honest. I just want to stay in my bed until my shithead landlord calls the cops to forcefully evict me. Up, oh, yep. Um, let's let's ruin the ability to rent ever again. That's a good idea. It's a very good. You're great at this, Julia. You great at this life thing, Julia. Um. I'm surprised how good at it you are. People are cunts for demanding money for services. Not surprised. Shit, I know this whenever life decides to fuck you over, it's always one thing after another, but this is too much. 
Yeah, I know, what a shithead. I mean, she's just late on rent for the past three months. How much is too much? Let's recap this last week of June 2019. Ah, ha, ha. Ah, um, 2020's great, girl. I mean, I'm calling from 2021, but 2020 is gonna be a very great, girl. And, um, how much is too much? Well, apparently... Having your freelance story not accepted, being late on rent, but then choosing to break all your boss's belongings so that he couldn't give you any money, um, and having your sources ousted is like too much. Despite the fact that your story not being accepted and being three months behind rent, like, would go hand in hand, so that's like one thing. It's like one thing. I've been kicked out of my job. Well, not that I've ever been hired, so let's just say my mentor broke every vague promise he had ever made to me. A big thing I've been working on for a year and a half went down the toilet. It's all useless. My boss didn't protect my sources properly, and now they keep trying to reach me through every possible channel to threaten me or just yell at me, and they have every right to react like that. All my side gigs were shut down, nobody replying to my emails, somebody's been dragging my name through the mud behind the scenes, and it worked. Um... Could that be your boss that kind of- you broke his shit? Like... He had to escort you with a guard? Like, yep, that would be a natural consequence of what you did. That would have- Nobody would even need to try that hard, honestly. I still have no idea who's sending these shitty messages around I've been asking, but... Listen, don't worry about it. I'm not going to stand idly by and watch you get cancelled by some mean-spirited delusional- Who's Dakota? Why doesn't she have an image? And, um... How's somebody mean-spirited and delusional when our snowflake over here broke her boss's shit? Like, yeah, um... Play dumb games, win dumb prizes. I said don't worry about it. I have three unread messages from my landlord. The message previews were stressful enough. Call came from Chicago. Apparently dad had bladder cancer. Mom is in hysterics. She'll go crazy if she heard about my situation, so I have to pretend everything is okay, whatever she calls. And she calls every day. She just won't hang up before she offloads all her burdens on me. And I can't blame her because we all had to learn to cope with that psychopathic tendency somehow. Um, how about... Hey mom, I'm coming back home to help you with dad. <laughs> I don't know, that's, that's a thing. Would even sound reasonable. I was robbed. All my documents and what little money I had gone. Oh, now that's bad. Um, wait, you had money and you didn't pay rent? Don't even know when or where it happened, and it's driving me crazy because I'm always extremely wary of pickpockets. The list goes on. That's it. Also, um, the vampire following you around did not ca did not cause your dad's bladder cancer, just like I feel like I need to make the statement, like, that's a like, completely unconnected thing, and a lot of these things you kind of did to yourself. I don't want to sound paranoid, but it really feels like a concerted attack. Paranoid is good. Anyway, I know you always hand wave the topic away, but just remember that if anything happens, my place is your place. You don't have to go through it alone. There you go! You can be couch hopping right now! Right now, and then maybe get employed at the burger place, where you need to learn kung fu and shit, because... You can work on your blog while working at the burger place. You combine your hobby and your job. There you go. I do. I've been a trouble magnet and as self-centered as may be, I don't want it to affect you. I know. Listen, I have another call. Alright, just call me if anything happens, no matter how dumb it seems, okay? And swing by whenever you can. Well, I mean, you can actually fail this part, apparently. I'm probably not at the part that I could fail just yet. I will. Thank you. See you. I put my phone away, exhale, and blankly stare in front of me. Christ. I glance at my reflection in the window. Just look at this idiot. 
Whatever situation requires me to dress formally, I still feel a bit like a child cosplaying as an adult. Don't worry, all my formal clothes look like they don't actually fit me. Um, but I have embraced the weirdness, so, um... Honestly, I would just show up to job interviews looking like a fucking fruitcake. And it might be a point in... Might be a point for me. Ah, you would say that. You're my husband. Of course you don't think that I'm the asshole. Should have just followed the dress for the job you want advice and continued dressing up like a trust fund kind who keeps partying on Brooklyn rooftops for years without a care in the world. It's only after a while that I realize the car is empty. And unnaturally so. I start feeling uneasy, but someone enters my purple... Peripheral vision. Ah, perfectly normal. Oh. <laughs> yeah, um, th that looks that looks normal. That uh, not nothing wrong there. That's the last thing I consciously register. The world dissolves. When I come to, I'm out of the subway, staring at the back alley I don't recognize. It's pretty dark, my eyes start adjusting, and I try to figure out what happened. There's a gun in my hand. A faint silhouette on my feet. It's not moving. Somebody stands in front of me, covered in shadows. I can't fully make out her face, and she's staring at me with visible intent. She speaks. Her voice is raspy and androgynous. Her tone hateful and mocking. Androgynous! Um, that's mean. Aren't you a nasty one? What's- what's going on? Who are you? Don't play coy. My mind goes blank. I look at the ground, there's a body, riddled with bullet holes, and I recognized who it was! The corpse belongs to Mike Antonov. One of the double spirals whistleblowers. My source, who was just threatening to get back at me a few hours ago. Ah, uh, yes, you have no fucking clue. I am very nasty. Um, before I can feel even the tiniest bit of compassion, I face a terrible realization. They will think I'm guilty. Oh my god, am I guilty? How is this real? It was one of her sources. Um. What happened to him? This guy? Again, don't play coy. You knew him. He was mad at you. You started telling him sob stories about your situation. He wasn't having none of it. You got mad. Things escalated. He died. This isn't true. It's plausible, but that doesn't make it true, or does it? This is just a nightmare. It doesn't even make sense. It must be a dream. And if it isn't, the person in front of me must be responsible. Ah, yes! <laughs> oh. Temporary insanity does not ever happen, right? Um, but yeah, um, legitimately, don't remember what happened is a thing that you can't plead. <laughs> um, there's a faint voice in my head screaming that it's her world, that I'm just living in it. What the fuck have you done to me? Nothing yet. But I'll do what I can to get you locked up for life. This is a murder in the first degree with special circumstances. You're just really horny. <laughs> just really horny. Um, her detached voice and nonsensical tone only reassures me this can't be real. I refuse to believe it is. Before I even manage to think this through, I'll point the gun at her. If I did murder him, you wouldn't be acting like that. You wouldn't be just standing in front of me. You'd be running away, calling the police, begging for help, yelling that I'm a psycho. Oh, you are a psycho, but I'm not a coward. I won't let you walk out of here alive. This doesn't make a single lick of sense. Tears swell up in my eyes. Why are you doing this? Because sometimes, one has to confront what they really made of. There's no two ways about it. She's gonna be nuts. Slowly but surely, she starts walking toward me. Stop right there or I'll shoot. 
Go on. It's the only way you can get off the hook, isn't it? The only way you can survive. But you will definitely prove you are the monster I claim you are. What the fuck is this tone? So controlling, inauthentic, pa patronizing. <laughs> just, Jesus Christ, if she's approaching, just shoot. Just shoot. I'm serious. For your own sake, you better be. She keeps getting closer. Maybe I did kill Ant enough. Maybe I don't deserve to live. Maybe it's less tiring not to live. Maybe I should just let her take care of me. Maybe I will just wake up. Or maybe this insane reality needs to be rejected as violently as possible. Maybe a world that wants to destroy me deserves to be destroyed. It's right there in front of me. It's now or never. Duh! You shoot? I bet the weapon isn't loaded enough. But you don't have enough bullets! Close my eyes and squeeze the trigger. Loud bang echoes through the valley. I'm afraid to look at what I've done. I've been to a shooting range once and felt... Absolutely horrified by pistols. Such a small thing, but it can easily puncture a hole in the fabric reality is made out of. <laughs> Shoot her! <laughs> um. No, you don't puncture holes in reality with weapons. If we did, we would be having wizard wars and they would be awesome. Oh no, not the cats! Not the cat. Um, aren't cats like the, um... The guardians of, like, the underworld? Jesus Christ, Forrest, are you sure that you're just not, like, a really angry and dead spirit? That just inhabits a meat bag from time to time. And that's how you're here. Like, you're actually dead, but you don't realize it in your possession, the possessing the poor fucker that owns your body? Never knew I would be able to use it against another human being. The very thought makes me want to puke. You are a right choice after all. I'm so glad. Ah <laughs> uh, yes, you're like, I found my favorite person. And then you started possessing them. And you're possessing them for so long now that you forgot that you possessed them. You're just like, yep, this is just me. This is just me. But every single night, you actually go back to the underworld and the cats are like, Why do you keep on trying to escape it? And you're like, Ooh, cat, no! Get away! <laughs> you haven't allowed yourself to break, but you've crossed the line I needed you to cross. There's a silent flame in you that could become an inferno if left unchecked. I'm sure hope it will. She's still alive. Her voice is coming from behind me. She puts her hands around my waist, and her cold mouth touches my neck. I can feel my shirt getting violently torn off. I don't understand, but I'm too dazed to protest. <laughs> I'm... I'm sorry. Were you wearing any kind of shirt that required tearing? I don't think you did. <laughs> She's just undressing you for the fun! <laughs> I don't consent, Ubu. That was your final test. Congratulations, you have proven yourself worthy. Don't speak with your mouth full, you weird lady that carries her face shadow with her. I mean, look at that side of a face shadow that is attached with a little strap to the rest of her face. <laughs> oh, yes! <laughs> Boobs are big enough! <laughs> yeah, look! Was that a shirt that needed to be undressed? Or was that without her shirt? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's not I mean that's not that looks like a shadow not a mask <laughs> well I mean um 
nothing that you have normally should be sharp. Now a thing. I can feel something sharp sliding into my neck. It's not too painful, just startling. Think a doctor pushing a needle into your vein without a proper warning. Um... I had a lot of doctors, actually, that depends. Like, one Lithuanian doctor couldn't get my veins whatsoever, so she would push the needle in and then start turning it in a 360 degree angle, going it should be there somewhere. And she was at it for hours. Um, I actually, I broke down crying. I, I broke, I broke down crying and then they made fun out of me going, you know, oh, you're a big girl and here you are crying. I was a teenager at that point. Um, do not do that. Whatever you do, whoever you are, don't turn needles while inside of people. That's, whoa. Um. No. That shit never happened in the UK! They always could do it the first time around. I don't understand the fuck was with that lady! Like... And then she blamed me going, you're too scared so your veins have closed, and it's like... I'm pretty sure my arm would have died then, but no, I had bruises all over. <laughs> Then it hits me. Pure bliss. The dopamine receptors I've considered completely fried until now suddenly recover and start bombarding me with pleasure I've never known before. Good for you! Good for you, you weirdly concerned looking weirdo that doesn't have a shirt anymore. I finally let the tears go! They come flooding. They've been waiting for years. It's truly good for you! Good for you having a cry. And then Sombra goes, actually, you're too weak. Is it raining? I feel like I'm in the middle of a deluge at least. Washing away all my fears, all my sorrows, all my anger, all my pain, all my ego. Oh, oh, oh you don't get to make that joke. It took me a while to get it. Um, <laughs> it's the pleasure bombs. It's only been 80 years, love. I mean, we all know that we have seen the World War II happen. Well, apparently, mine move. So, meh. Actually, everything moves. My joints move. I'm missing a stomach valve. I miss a couple ribs. Actually, the only thing not moving is my back because it's bolted by now. I've become one with the world and the woman behind me. Well, she has reached the peak Buddhism in her death. Good for you. Um, thanks, love. Eh. She's holding me tight, making me feel like the only important thing in this world. Everything else blurs. I feel something intense toward her, something I've never felt before. Is this love? I hope it is. Not to your parents, not to your friends. I mean, you had to graduate, you're at least mid-20s. Mid You've been working as a journalist for a couple of years. Uh, you're, you're, you're sure that you're not like a sociopath or something? Um. Oh yeah, it's two liters. Two liters. This is not you. This is a familiar cynical voice in the back of my head. But it's okay. Never felt particularly fond of me anyway. Oof. Okay, never died with that thought in your head unless you want personal hell of being a ghost that just repeatedly goes, I hate me! Don't do that. That's... Uh, yep, you're just gonna hate yourself for eternity as a ghost. That doesn't, that doesn't seem like very productive.
New York, you're perfect. Oh, please don't change a thing. That's a very weird last thought to have, girl. He who laughs in the shadows always has the last laugh. No! No, 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 no. Um, you can laugh from anywhere and have the last laugh. The shadows are just kind of an extra thing. You can, you can stand in the sunlight as a bomb falling, be laughing, and be the last one to laugh in that space. And your laughter will echo as the sonic boom goes off and everybody gets splintered into little bits and bobs and pieces. <laughs> ah, yes. Hallelujah! Praise be! When everything is cliché, nothing is. Isn't that the ever-distant utopia I've been chasing all along? People on the other trains, I hope you're doing fine! Okay, um... Suppose she is suffering from a lot of blood loss, but like, her thoughts are going into like, the crazy realm really fast. God, shut up, just enjoy it. You finally understand. She's making love to me! She's giving birth to me? She's burying me. Yep, um... <laughs> yeah, um... <laughs> like, um... One of the three?! <sighs> no! You know what? You know what's crossing my mind? Fucking a dead baby! And that's the most awful thing that has crossed my mind in a very long time. <laughs> I know! It reminds me of Shiogareth from Oblivion. A pit full of clouds. Or was it clowns? It was probably clowns from the way that it smelled. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I've been dead for a while. I'm pretty sure I could stare at my own corpse in her hands from a distance for a moment some how. Yeah, um remember when I told you not to die hating yourself or you'll be a very weird ghost? Yeah. And then I'm alive again! She lifts her mouth from my neck. No, wait. I taste blood in my mouth. Was I drinking her blood too? I realized that whatever this was, it's over and I have to bask in the afterglow while I still can. I also immediately understand that I'm going to chase this fleeting feeling for the rest of my existence. Welcome to drug addiction! Never do drugs, kids! Actually, never mind, you can have a really bad trip. Um, when I was a kid, and one of the two surgeries, because they have gotten really blurry during the years. <laughs> yes, avocado teacup. Um, like, and one of the two surgeries, I actually had morphine as pain relief. In my other surgery, the nurses stole my morphine, and unfortunately I don't remember which one was which anymore. But during the morphine one, I remember trying to get off it as fast as I could and asking doctors to take me off it, despite the fact that there was pain. Um, because of all the trippy shit that I was seeing, such as like really creepy nurses staring at me through the window going, BREATHE! And doctors walking through walls, and it really freaked me out as a kid. Um, I would have good dreams because whenever I would fall asleep, they would be very, very, um, colorful and shit. But I couldn't separate reality from not reality, and I never wanted to feel that ever again. Now, I, I'm kind of chasing paranormal shit, but, um, if I took even a hint of drugs, I would immediately be unable to verify my own reality, and that, that, that just wouldn't be very useful. Yeah! It was morphine. Um, it was actual morphine. And... 
Hello, Rofi. Um, in the other surgery, I was supposed to receive pain relief, but I was told that there's no pain relief in the hospital available. I'm pretty sure that they sold it. But I no longer remember which is which, or when that happened. But during one of those, I lost all of my memory. <laughs> to be fair, they asked me, do I know who I am and what the time was? And when I could answer those questions, they felt really relieved. And it's like, yes, I retained basic information. I lost any colorful memory. So I'm just going to assume that I died on one of the surgical tables. And that's what fucked my whole memory up. Well. Um. Yeah, I had two in my life, Rofi. I was just recalling them. Because drugs, we were talking about drugs. And that is the last time I did anything remotely trippy, by the way, when um, one of the surgeries. <laughs> Finally, she lets out a whisper which concludes the ceremony. No matter what happens next, don't forget, you're a monster. Yeah, that's not a mask, that is a shadow. But you were lucky enough to be born into a world of monsters, so don't you ever mourn that fact. Embrace it. Woo! Ah, she did claim big meat beep. Big Beat Burger as her domain, apparently. Um. I like the intro. I don't- I don't think I like our protag, but I liked the intro. Um. <laughs> oh yes! Where we beat our meat! And apparently you need to know Kung Fu in order to sell there. <laughs> I think you know how. I think you know how. Um, outside of... Now that I'm thinking, outside of that very weird run in into drugs when I was a child. Outside of that, the only remotely unreality experience that I have had was migraines. Because if you have a migraine for long enough and it's strong enough, time and space stops existing. All there ever is is pain. Don't care what hour it is. You don't care what day it is. You don't know how long you were in pain. You don't know when it's gonna end. And you're not necessarily too sure where you are. That's... yep. Yeah. I, I started doing a lot of um, magic mental work. And it has actually... I didn't have a strong migraine ever since I started doing that, so maybe it was some sort of mental capacity trigger? That I kinda, like, clicked where I allowed to be myself and something unblocked and um, I no longer experience extreme migraine. Maybe it was stress related, maybe I just- I wasn't living as myself well enough. I don't know. Um, I still get migraines, they're never that bad. I hope I'll never, ever get to that place ever again. It's an interesting place to be in. I don't want to see it. Yeah, it just, it's complete, it dominates your life. But yes, we're in Big Beat Burger again. Familiar surroundings, faces are recognized, mood, same as it ever was. Still, I process it in an entirely different way. It all frustrates me now, or more precisely, makes me frustrated with myself. It's like I'm clinging to the remnants of a cocoon I've outgrown. Ugh! Dear Julia, you can leave! You can... There's a door somewhere, probably. You can just, like... Well, um, she died. That's what happened to her, um... And... She apparently had a change of clothes. Alternatively, that is the shirt that she was stripped out of. Because, remember, if you're killing somebody, stripping their off- off their shirt is, like, a thing? Yeah, Forrest, I kinda... Yep, she's... 
It's like she never outgrew that 15 year old face, right? Um, but she's at least in her mid-twenties considering that she had held a journalistic job for two years and she had to go to uni for that. It's the same with these cigarettes. I don't need them anymore, so why do I keep holding on to them? Fucking hell, it's like I refuse to accept that I'm something better than I used to be. Oh, that's a little somber way of thinking if I ever saw one. I'm better. <laughs> It's like other clowns. Oh no, I'm a corpse, the summer. I'm better. I've been improved. <laughs> a vampire. Yep, the sombra. Just two nights ago, I met Karen. She embraced me, by which I mean turned me into a kindred. She calls herself my sire and me her child. <laughs> And I never asked her kinks and why is she calling me a child? Um, though I, I'm gonna laugh at her name. I'm, uh, at least it's not with a K. At least it's not with a K. Last night she taught me the basics of survival. Drinking blood, manipulating humans, bending steel. Controlling shadows. Ah, yes! Basics of survival, including bending steel. <laughs> um. Excuse me, Forest Fairy Burger. Tremere are the squishy vampires that um, managed to steal their immortality from their superior brethren called the Smitsi, then managed to diablorize Salubri. And spread propaganda that it was Salubri that were diablorizing everybody else by just using their normal abilities, so it killed like the only nice thing on earth. And come back to life knowing jack shit, having pretty much no innate power whatsoever. They need 10 years of training to do basic magic, and being able to do basic magic is not a fucking guarantee. So, um, you can literally become the pyramid accountant. Which means that, congratulations, you got teeth in immortality. Immortality in the fine print, by the way, while you're still useful. And, um, nothing else. Have fun. You will literally be better off being anyone else. Anyone else whatsoever. <laughs> yeah, I know, right? Imagine somebody desperately trying to teach you magic for 10 years and then realizing that you're simply incapable of it and then going, well, Timothy, I guess you're doing accounting for the rest of your eternity, here's a book. <sighs> Tonight I expect more lessons. Instead, she just told me to go out and enjoy myself. What's the catch? I asked, to which she responded, I might kill you if you prove to be a disappointed. Disappointment, yep, that, that death, la, la sombra vibes. La sombra vibes. It's like, go and have fun. But if what you do, I don't deem to be fun and psychotic enough, I might just kill you. There are a few rules. I have to uphold the masquerade. I can't contact anyone I know as a human. I can't let anyone realize I'm not human anymore, I can't embrace anyone, and so on. <laughs> ah yes, go on and have fun, you loser. Otherwise, I'm free to do whatever I want, but for some reason, the thing I did was come back here. All thy habits die hard. Um, I, I can just imagine her sire, like, watching from the shadows, going, she's just sitting in a burger joint, looking at people. You have all the power in the world, and this is how you enjoy yourself for realsies. <laughs> Aaron is probably watching me from somewhere even now. The way I understand it, tomorrow night she is supposed to introduce me to the Camarilla local society of vampires because Karen is a shithead coward that has um, defected from the Sabbat. She was probably too scared to go to the Middle East and fight the vampire war. Because she's a lame-ass wuss. Which is very unbefitting for her clan. 
but I'm I'm gonna hold it against Karen. I'm gonna hold it against Karen. Turns out they're the ones who have been systematically ruining my life lately, all a part of some secret evaluation that I barely passed. Just imagining the reach they have makes me dizzy. After they destroyed the old me that I barely cared about, Karen rebuilt me anew. On one hand, her test left some scars that will take time to heal. On the other hand, maybe I should just be grateful? I don't know, maybe you could have not been a shithead and handled the situation better yourself, like, I don't know, asking your boss for money and paying your rent? I am snapped out of my thoughts by a sudden scream. Some douchebag yelling about his french fries not being salty enough. I think this is my cue to leave, permanently. Goodbye, BBB! I hope I never see you again! I'm destined for greater things, you see! <laughs> yes, I should unclaim this burger joint! Let me do a lesser ritual on banishing on myself! Ooh. Hoo-hoo-hoo-hoo! Okay? We have- we have choices again. <laughs> the fries aren't even salty enough! But anyways, I actually do have to catch some sleep tonight. It wasn't supposed to be a long thing anyway. Um, so sorry about that, folks. I will stream when I can. Um, well, maybe we're gonna move this Saturday. If, if so, this is gonna be like a bit of a wibbly wobbly, timey wimey stuff. But, anyways, yep. Uh, thank you all for dropping by. I have to actually wake up for work tomorrow, so, um, that was big call out from the game going, you know, oh, I will be very tired having slept for four hours. I, I totally get that. I totally get that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I know. Boo! Um,. Uh, the game has really good music. I kind of like the art. I don't like our main character, but that's okay. I don't. I don't need to, to like us. Um, I I do like the big, fat La Sombra vibes though. Big fat La Sombra vibes of I am better than everything. Ah <laughs> uh, well, thank you for dropping by, Jade. And yeah, thank you all. And see you next time. Good to look.